So we are going to give you a tip of the iceberg again. Is that you know we have whole security course running just before this class, as you know. So in this we will just talk about two things: secret key encryption and public key encryptions. The chapter in the book covers a lot more, but obviously you know the book is not designed for one semester, so we will not cover much of this. We are just going to give you this idea a little bit, and. Um, yeah, so this is all that will be covered in the exam okay but first of all security means many things first it means integrity integrity means whether whatever I sent is the what was received not something different so if somebody changes a bit I should know that it was changed if it is changed if it is if if, if, the, if it is not changed then it is called integrity is maintained otherwise integrity is violated availability Availability means that nobody who is legal is, 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 is prevented from using it. There is no denial of service attack kind of thing, right? So, so the thing is, for example, you could ping continuously to some computer and, and, and then basically the people who want to really use the computer will not be able to get things done and that is violation of availability. Confidentiality means nobody can read your messages. So you need encryption. That's another name for privacy. Authentication. Authentication means you you are who say who you say you are. For example, if you get an email saying that the exam is cancelled, you know you should make sure that it is authentic message, <laughs> right? And uh, and it, it did, did happen. Okay. Authorization is that uh, only what you are authorized to do you do I mean and so there is a everybody is authorized to do certain things students are allowed, allowed to do something professors are allowed to do something else and then the deans are allowed to do something more and so on and so forth so we have to have authorization limits and so who can get done what and non repudiation is that you cannot deny that you did it so suppose you sign a piece of paper saying that I will pay twenty five thousand dollars to wash you and if you don't pay it, perhaps you can come after you and say that you signed it. And you say it's not my signature, they can prove it that's your signature, right? That is called repudiation is that if you sent a message saying that I sign it, and you can sign the message, there are ways of signing the message on the net. If you sign it, then we can take you to the court and show to the court that they signed it on the net. All right, so the source cannot take it back. All right, so those are all different words we use. And um, so we will go into secret key encryption. And these are the five, six things we will talk about secret key. Black encryption. So actually, let me just move into that rather than what we are going to talk about. Okay, so secret key means that we need to have a secret. If I want to talk to you, we both need to have a secret. If we have the secret, we can use that as a key and encrypt everything. All right, and this is called symmetric because you can use the same key to encrypt and you can use the same key to decrypt. So for example, we could select the key 9 and when I want to send you number 433, I could send you number 481. All right, now nobody else will figure out what 481 is but you know the key 9, so you will take the last digit that is the remainder, the other digits are the quotient, and you say okay 48R1 is 433. Make sense? But if you knew number 9 key then you know then it's not a secret anymore. So the secret is number 9. Yeah. Uh, how does the recipient center have the same key in the first place? Yeah, so that's a tough one. <laughs> just, just that is why we have to take the next course which is 571 where we teach you how to how the recipients get the key but assuming that we got the key assuming we got the key then we can use the key to encrypt and it is symmetric because we use the same key to encrypt and same key to decrypt so you see we use the same key to encrypt from the plain text to cipher text and we use the same key to decrypt so it is called symmetric 
So here are some other examples of secret key. You can substitute one thing for the other. Suppose we decide that we will substitute M for A, N for B, and so on and so forth. So basically you can just take letter A and add some number to get M. Add the same number to get N from B and so on and so forth. J, K, L, M, N, O. Well, here actually they didn't use simple substitution. What they did was, this is the code. We selected this code that for A we will say M, for B we will say M, for C we will say B, for D we will say B. And then when I want to send Bob, I love you, Alice, you will say NXN dot SKTC, NGC, BC, whatever it is, right? And then if they have the key, they can figure out what this means. Clear? Okay. So they call it monoalphabetic because each letter is individually encrypted. In polyalphabetic, you will take multiple letters, I'm sorry, you will take multiple codes for multiple positions. For the first position, this is the code. For the second position, there is a different code. For third position, different code. So there are more complicated techniques. Okay? And similar things are used in the real world. And what we do in the real world is that we take, and this is actually an example of what is called DES. DES is the data encryption system which is used in the banks and every other place. What we do is we take a 64-bit, everything is divided into 64-bit first. And then we take a 64-bit and divide into 8 bits. And then for 8 bits we substitute. Just like you substituted the M for A, we substitute something for 8 bits. Then we take um, them back and then we mingle them around. Means there is a permutation. So this is called substitution. Right? And this is called permutation because then, the, then there is another table which tells me that put the first bit at the fourth place, seventh, second bit at the thirteenth place. You know, so just mingle it around. All right, and then whatever you get, you go back again and do it second time, third time, fourth time, fifth time, sixteen time, sixty-fourth time. If you've done it enough, it looks like totally encrypted now. How many times do you need Sixteen minimum. But um, if you're randomly shuffling, you should only be shuffling seven times mathematically, right? No, no, no. Hold on. If you're randomly shuffling, you should be only shuffling seven times. Yeah, yeah, no, there is no limit, such, such limit. 16 times is in the desk. Eh? No, no, he's saying for 50 percent randomness, which is different than what we are talking about here. But you're not shuffling the chunks, you're shuffling the bits. We are shuffling the bits here, but, but at the same time, um, that number might be for how much random you want to be. But uh, here, I mean, basically, we, we want it to be totally unintelligible. That's all the goal is. So that, so anyway. So this is, uh, this is what we do. We do two things, substitution and permutation. Substitution is basically a table lookup. You take A and substitute it for something else. And permutation is moving the bits around. Yeah. Variable length. OK, variable length is not desirable. I mean, you know, is that generally, so we generally get x bit in and x bit out, but um, variable length is more used for compression. And so the compression is variable length. And some, in some situations, we do compression first before we do encryption, then it is variable length. But encryption by itself is not, generally not. Although, although you could do that, I mean, you know, for example, Morse code is not really a secret but that's the variable length, right? But I, I think for encryption, we have not seen that. All right, so that was the block encryption. You take into start block, and then you can, um, you can um, do the substitution and permutation, and we call it diffusion and confusion. Um, basically, diffusion means we want to move the bits by substitution, we want to move the bits 
so that they are spread over all over and by confusion we want to move them around so those are the two things and these two words came from Shannon the father of information theory he simply said that if we want to encrypt them then we need to do diffusion followed by confusion he could not come up with actually he did not propose a solution but he said propose an approach diffusion and confusion and then people figured out how to do it and so we still use those words all right so then we make it a little bit more complicated by doing cipher block chaining where we take um, so here thing but first let me tell you if you don't do cipher block chaining this is what will happen is that you take the message encrypt it you get the cipher text take the second message you encrypt it now the problem with this is that you will get the same message every time you have the same message here right which is not good that gives some information to the attacker that I don't know what the message is but the same message that was sent two days ago two days ago they bought a lot of stock so they are going to buy a lot of stock today it's the same message all right so you don't want to have the same message encrypted to the same cipher text every single time right so what you do is you do chaining you take this cipher text and add it to the message before you do the second one and then you add it to the message before you add the third one you need an initial value in the beginning which you change every day so as long as the initial value is different all these values will be different right so now the attacker does not get the same combination every th single time So here is another example, continue holding, start bombing, I mean now it is very difficult to guess what you are saying, even though there are four words, whether it is not two words, continue holding or start bombing, you know, you don't know because it keeps changing, I like. So <coughs> DES and 3DES, so DES is the standard that was first developed in 1998 and broken in 1998, by, sorry, it was developed much before that. It was broken in 1998 by Electronic Frontier Foundation. They ran a competition saying that who can break it. And so a lot of computers are put together to, you know, work out the other way around. But anyway, it uses 64-bit blocks and 56-bit keys. So 64-bit block means that you take the message, chop it into 64-bit chunks. And actually you take 64-bit keys also but the keys, what you do is you take only 7 bits out of the 8 bits. Alright? So uh, if an 8 byte, 64 bit, but you get only 7 times 8, 56 bits. So that is what you use, 56 bit key. And now 56 bit key is, is not strong enough. And therefore, DES is no longer used. We use triple DES. We do DES 3 times. So instead of 16 rounds, we do 48 rounds. In fact, there, there could be two or three different keys. If you use two keys or three keys, but you use, basically you use three executions of this and um, you can get two times 56, 112 or three times 56, 168 bit. Okay? And, um, and then the 64 bit is actually too slow so this is kind of you know not the best thing so that is somewhat dated both of them are dated what we use now is AES advanced encryption standard AES which was developed by NIST which is the National Institute of Standards and Technology so NIST is in Washington DC also called National Bureau of Standards or it was called National Bureau of Standards before now it's called NIST and so they do all the security work for the United States. So all the security standards, when if you take the security course, you will notice that one chapter after chapter after chapter, all the standards for security are set by them. Once they are set by them for the United States, they are copied all over the world exactly the same way. So the rest of the world does the same thing. So AES is the standard from NIST and it uses 128-bit blocks and the keys are 128 bit, 192 bit, 256 bit and bigger and bigger and bigger actually going on. 
but regardless of which standard you use there are some combination of substitution and permutation confusion and diffusion period it just how they do it and how and they are very carefully designed these substitution tables are very carefully designed so that they are very difficult to break and so that this is a good point to stop this one basically the summary of this whole part is five things first is that the secret key encryption requires a shared secret as long as we have the key we can do the encryption and we talked about three different standards DES, 3DES and AES in all three now please listen to it please you still have five minutes you still have five minutes it's three minutes okay so basically CBC what is CBC CF CBC cipher block chaining that chaining we talked about is one of the modes that they use to make sure that this you get a different text every time different cipher text we did not talk about the stream cipher so this one is this one is actually crossed out four number four is crossed out number five is uh, also we didn't talk about so number first three things we talked about okay